Uh, Schmidl in the Predator. There we go. Leading down into the first corner. He's got what? Stefanko. Oh, there's somebody off at the back there. And oh, that's Polesny as well, making a bit of contact with Stefanko. I think he's just about gotten ahead of him on the run down towards the Rouge. Yes, he has. Polesny takes second in this race. Stefanko's not giving up, though. They're going to be side by side through Eau Rouge, up and over the hill. It looks like a number of cars going a little bit off of the circuit as they make their way up and over Radion. It's three wide down the Kevel straight. The only person I think that's not involved in a battle here, Chris, is actually Smittle. Oh, and, and I'm sure he's very happy about it as well. So much jostling going on, as you ever imagined. But my goodness me, we were getting three or four wide people going <laughs> on the grass. Oh, Carney in a small car. That is going to be seven. Oh, 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 my goodness, he left. I don't think you could have fit very much in between the rear wing and the diffuser there. That was very, very close, but doesn't look like he's got the move done. Oh, a bit of wheel banging coming on as they go into Le Gomme. And does Rigo defend it in the ace car? He does. The currently then looking to switch, but oh, well defended from the ace car. Firm affair there. Klebitz is the highest running of the non-super soft runners, and indeed he's actually coming back on Frabish. Looks like he might try to go around the outside. That will give him the inside wow. line for the second part of the chicane, but Frabish hangs it around the outside, gets the exit that he needs, maintains the position. But who is this on the left-hand side? The Logitech of Kovacic just sneaks his way through, moves ahead. That was a very... Oh, no! Oh, contact no! between the two of them. The Logitech car is spun around. Oh, the Thrustmaster car, that's Pachata. He's, he's up and over and flipping all around and vibrating and oh no that's just a nightmare scenario here comes Carney off of Blanchimon he's forcing the outside for the bus stop she can can he get it done from Pavel Reichel impact between the two no damage done and that's Jan Framish in the Avasco behind but no Carney still can't get it done incredible stuff these guys are really getting the elbows out really pushing hard hard but fair as Hernaki makes the move on Bushek in the smarty car. Is he going to get that one done before we get to Lake Home? No. Well, Ooh. whoops. That, uh, that got a little bit lively. Yeah, there looks like there was impact between the two. So Hernaki goes through. And that's a spun car. Oh, here we go with Frabish. Ooh. He does make the overtake around the outside into Lake Home. And here, here comes the spur car of Courtney. Oh, that's a, an aggressive defensive maneuver from the Acer driver of Pavel Reigel as he moves over. You can see Corny is just thinking about ways to get past that Acer car up ahead. He nearly, nearly... Oh, that's Whoa. a big, big snap of oversteer. Levis will want to be clearing that as soon as he can. He's going to want to do it before he gets to a rouge. Oh, it can be done, but you trust in the person you're passing. And that was brilliantly done by both of them. But that does leave Halebitz open to counterattack. It's a bit of slipstream then from Frabish. He can't get it done. Look at the traction from Halebitz. He managed to keep the pace going and keeps the Avast car behind him. Brilliantly done. That's, however, a very different story, Kazani, coming over Radion, a side-by-side -side oh, with no. Secret with the back marker in the middle. Oh, my goodness me, who is that? That's someone getting trying to get out of the way. <laughs> Yelling at oh, maybe. my goodness me. It was that Hacken and Schumacher and Zonta. Oh, Ooh, wow. Well, hell, Kazani, I bet that woke him up. <laughs> goodness me. But, uh, yeah, well, that got lively. <laughs> And here is the leader. Well, well, once again, we've said this once or twice this season. And oh. oh, no! Oh, that no! Is oh, no! Oh, no! But your winner here in Spa, once again, it's the Predator car of Michael Smiddle. It is Michael Smiddle, as you mentioned, who picks up the win ahead of Polesny and Blazek. I got to say, possibly Blazek, my driver of the day, because uh, he was chasing after Polesny the entire race, and he was having to think about Martin Stefanko behind. Blazek, I think, really did a fantastic job. Pavel Reigl taking the VGP2 win in the end. Six and a half seconds up from Kovic. There's a bit of a closer gap in the VGP2s than the VGP1s. But in the, as far as the top three are concerned, but then look how they spread out. I mean, only eight of the VGP2s came home. Thanks so much for watching, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.